All right, hi everyone, and welcome to another installment of our Ask the Editor series. Um, today is a little wacky. It's like a wacky Tuesday. Um, we kind of confused the day, the time with Josh, um, but he's here with us now. I'm glad everything's okay. <laughs> I was uh, <laughs> with so much going on in the world, I was getting a little worried, but he's here now. It's just a, a time change issue. Josh, you're out in Joshua Tree, California. Right. Yeah, PSD over here. My apologies to everybody who was no, here. No, no problem. It happens. Um, so we're glad you can make it. Um, thank you to everyone. We did have um, a participant who came out earlier and apologies to her. Thank you for people who are showing up. Um, we hope you can all check out the recording. Um, as always, uh, if you have any questions, comments, anything about this series, just um, you know, leave a comment and I'm happy to hear from you. Um, so Frontier Poetry uh, began with the simple mission of putting, of being a platform for emerging poets to uplift, to prepare, and to inspire. They're looking for poetry that pushes language forward for poets and poems that strive to place themselves at the edge of what language can do. But this does not mean that they are only concerned with experimental poetry. They believe that sonnets can be at the frontier, book length poems can be at the frontier, Confessional poetry can be at the frontier. As long as a piece is constructed with exceptional consideration for language and craft, that poem is a fit for them. And Josh Rourke, is that, uh, Josh Rourke? Yes, that's right. <laughs> is a poet and the editor of the online journals Frontier Poetry and Palette Poetry, as well as a 2017 graduate from the Antioch University Los Angeles MFA program. Uh, so again, okay. welcome, Josh. I'm glad we were able to figure it out, even if you're brain early, <laughs> still waking up over there. Yes. Thank it's good yeah, to thank you so much. I'm, it's my pleasure to be here. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, so let's jump in. Tell us about, um, if you can, I guess, start with the origin story of your magazine. What inspired you to create this magazine? How did it begin? Um, what, what got you going? Yeah, I, uh, I got pretty lucky. I was the an associate editor for uh, Antioch's student-run magazine, Lunch Ticket, which is a great magazine. Oh, yeah. Um, and that led me to meeting up with the people behind the Master's Review, mm -hmm. um, which is a fiction journal for mm -hmm. new voices. And the people behind that um, wanted to do something similar for poetry. So they were looking for a poetry editor. Mm -hmm. So they i met with them we liked each other we decided to do it together and so with that team we built frontier um and really yeah it, it was a space for new writers um and that's sort of where most of my passion comes in I, i've always enjoyed teaching i've always enjoyed connecting with people like seriously pursuing their, their self-expression um and so that it just was a natural fit. And yeah, that was, I think, March of 2017. So it's, okay. is that four years? Went by fast. Yeah. Congrats. That's <laughs> great. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's interesting. I'm sure people um, who maybe want to learn more about getting involved with literary magazines might be wondering, like when you say you were involved with Lunch Ticket and then you met the people what was the link between Lunch Ticket and Master's Review and how did you work that connection? Or how did yeah, you um, so it was actually the editor in chief of Lunch Ticket mm -hmm. went to AWP that year okay. where she met the people doing Master's Review and they had a flyer or something mm -hmm. that they were handing out looking for a poetry editor that she forwarded to me. Um, and from there I connected to them via the phone and went through the you know, interviewing and all that stuff. Um, so yeah, AWP was like really it that uh -huh. got me into the the same room as them for sure. Oh, cool. Okay, so it was the people at Masters Review mm -hmm. and they wanted to branch out into poetry and right. sort of created this opportunity for you. That's really cool. Um, yeah. So was there, yeah. did, did you guys feel that there was like some kind of lack in the poetry? Because I know a lot of people start literary magazines because they feel like, 
um, nobody's covering a certain thing or nobody's writing in a certain way? And was there, did you feel like there was something that was missing? You know, it's a little bit. So Master's Review started in, I think, 2009. Mm-hmm. And it it's it's very successful in how many submissions it gets, how many people read the magazine, um, the quality of the stories that it publishes. And so they designed a magazine that was completely digital, that was publishing once a week um, at professional rates, one story a week, and lots of sort of blog style content, interviews, um, you know, essays throughout the week as well. Um, and the, that model just, it seemed to fit really well the market for readers and for writers. And so they're, instead of sort of scaling vertically and adding in a poetry section and then publishing, you know, a poem and a story a week, yeah. they decided, and I think it was a really wise decision to just expand horizontally and then have a poetry market just be its own thing its own identity its own space and yeah in the way that they were able to fund the project was because being a digital magazine they ran contests and Mm -hmm. so we don't have any outside funding all of our revenue all of our budget comes from the contests we run and so they were like we could do this thing um the same thing that we're doing with tmr with poetry in this new space we use the funds that TMR has raised to launch it. And it's kind of, you know, dominoed out since then. You mentioned mm. in my bio that I was the editor of Palette, which was another poetry magazine we founded together. Um, and I've actually handed that off now to Sara Ali, who's a great okay. new editor in chief over at Palette. Okay. Um, I've got to update my bio. That, that just happened this morning. <laughs> I was trying to find a bio me. for you and I had a really hard time, by the way. So. Yeah, I don't have I don't have much, but all my all my energy goes into the magazines. Okay. But um, yeah, so she she just came on board. I mean, so we founded Palette after that because yeah, we wanted to branch out a little bit away from the new voices space. But it's just when when we opened up, and I, I think this is similar for the editor for TMR Masters Review. It's just that there's so many good writers, good stories, good poems mm-hmm. out there. We couldn't possibly publish all of them. I mean, once you get to the top sort of, you know, say I have a spot open for Friday, there's, you know, five to 10 poems that I could feel comfortable putting in that spot. I mean, the the quality is out there. We wanted to be publishing more, but we didn't feel like um, it made sense to break our once a week uh, sort of structure and calendar. Mm -hmm. So we launched Palette, we launched Craft Literary. Um, We've since launched Fractured Lit and the Voyage Journal. And then later this year, we're going to be launching Uncharted magazine. Wait, 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 so that's wait, wait, a mix of you're, you're blowing my mind right poetry. now. <laughs> Sorry to cut you off. You're so craft literary, fractured lit. These are all under one umbrella of people. Essentially, we work, yeah, we work as a collective of magazines. So no and we've okay. centralized a lot of like the what do you call it? The sort of back end costs. So we have one marketing person, we have one accounting person, we have me, who's the editorial director, who sort of helps manage all these things together. Um, yeah, and we sort of share resources this way so that we can keep growing and that we can sort of cover each other's gaps and we just exist together. I meet up with the editors once a week with our little editorial board. It's, it's a lot of fun. That's yeah. amazing. I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. So we're all just a little family. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's sort of like <laughs> when you find out like YouTube and Uber and all, they're all owned by like, <laughs> uh-huh. um, that's really cool. So, okay. So you have editorial meetings with the other editors from these other journals. Right. Okay. Right. And so we'd sort of find our best practices that way we oh, saw okay. sort of thorny editorial issues right i um, mean we just work together right and we sort of are modeled similarly though we all sort of have to grow to find which way that we fit what people want um mm-hmm. so there's yeah so we, we discover our own differences and the editors um it's their sort of magazine it's their sort of space uh, the, mm-hmm. the collective is, is to exist and support you know what i mean um but yeah so it's been really fun so i've i'm now the founder 
like the, my fifth magazine will be later this year in August with Uncharted. Oh, wow. Which will be genre fiction. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. Okay. So you're starting another enterprise. And that's also part yeah, so this of the kind of Yeah, part of that. the family. This one will be, right. So we have Flash. We have short fiction for both TMR and craft, though it's the same mm -hmm. same thing that we did with Palette and Frontier, where it's new voices and sort of more academic platform. Um, and then, so we have Fractured Literary, which is Flash, mm -hmm. the Voyage Journal, which is for YA fiction, which is such a interesting platform. We have to, there's so much to learn about that space, but it's so yeah. exciting to be there. And then, um, Uncharted, which will be for genre fiction, for okay. like all the stuff that doesn't find a home in the usual literary fiction magazines. Um, and we, we, we just looked at the sort of genre space of mm -hmm. periodicals and journals and magazines, and we felt that the audience deserved a little bit more modernization than mm -hmm. what was currently out there. So yeah, so we'll be doing sci-fi, horror, crime, short stories over with wow. Uncharted. That's really cool. Is there a name for your the larger collective that you're all a part of? Yeah, it's called um, Discover New Art. Is sort of the, ah. the umbrella okay. organization DNA. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Cool. And if people were mm. interested in getting involved with the umbrella organization, is that possible, or is that sort of like a tight knit? Yeah. Right now, it's pretty tight knit. Mm -hmm. um, we're for the first time hiring somebody into that team to help with social okay. media stuff for all the magazines, which I don't, I don't envy that person because it's going to be <laughs> a lot of work. But um, yeah, I mean, you could go to discovernewart.com okay. to sort of see, that's where we sort of list out our platforms, um, yeah. and describe who we are. Right. And there's, I believe, some contact information on there if they want to reach out to us. Or you, you could always just reach out to me, mm -hmm. um, Josh at frontierpoetry.com. Okay. Or anything. That's really cool because actually one of my questions I saw on your website that um, it said you're interested in being more than a byline for poets that you actually want to create a platform and so I was wondering how you create a kind of larger platform for the poets that are published with you but it sounds like if you have access to these different magazines different editors different resources there's much more opportunity for that. Yeah and we try you know, it's a big priority for myself and the other editors in our meeting and our sort of quarterly goals and all that is to do the best that we can to give back to our contributors. Mm -hmm. um, so we're all sort of working to develop ways to always be better at that. Um, but yeah, the reason that this is sort of the reason that we exist, um, that Frontier was successful, that all the magazines after that were successful is... Um, with TMR, it did the hard work of spending six years, seven years, eight years, I think, before Frontier of building an audience. Um, and it was TMR its being, magic sauce was this newsletter audience that we had. Sorry, TMR being the master's review. The master's review. Oh, yeah. It, the yeah. master's review, right? Which is the original magazine that was uh, founded in 2009. And so when we launched Frontier, we said, here's this new thing that we're doing for poetry. Mm -hmm. And we got into that audience and we were able to, a lot of people moved over. And then from there, uh, we just sort of have this big audience that's for Discover New Art that mm -hmm. all of these separate platforms are able to sort of make their own and tap into and that sort of thing. Um, so that that is a big part of like, both our success and what we're proud of that we can do for our yeah. contributors is mm -hmm. put them in that newsletter, which is um, considerable, which is yeah. significant and probably sort of at the top end of what literary magazines have as far as numbers go okay. um, and eyeballs. Uh, yeah. That's great. Um, so with your magazine specifically, with Frontier, like, take us through the editorial process. I noticed you guys have a ton of readers, it seems, which is um, more for most literary magazines. So are they, they're the first eyeballs on a piece as it comes through the slush? And take, take us through the whole process. Yes, yeah, so with Frontier, the aim for 
having a large team of readers, it, it's very deliberate. It, it's large and diverse. Mm -hmm. So that because so much of so much of making it through the slush is just meeting the right reader in the right emotional moment of their lives that they can yeah. respond, you know, emotionally to whatever the poem is, right? Mm -hmm. um, in poetry in particular, same thing with others. But yeah, so I, I wanted to build a team that was cast as wide a net as possible, mm -hmm. as wide as um, diverse experiences um, across the world and send the first read of submissions through them. Um, and yeah, with contests, it, it's a little bit different with, than with our sort of regular submission category, which is always open and always free. Um, that one, the readers will sort of, the first read, they'll upvote, and then all the readers will sort of split off and do second reads. Am I breaking up? Can you hear me? No, you're good. Nope, now, okay. yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, the, for the regular reading submit, the regular submission category, they'll read, there'll be a round of second reads where all the readers get to decide together and communicate and talk and pick their favorites. And then those will go to myself and the editorial team, which is right now Jose and Saba, who's our okay. editorial fellow and our associate editor. Um, and then we sort of pick our favorites and I decide what gets on the calendar. Mm. Uh, for contest, it's similar. We have the first reads, but we ask all the readers to nominate between two and five pieces out of what they get from their first read batch. Um, and then we have a long list of maybe, you know, 60 or 70, um, a little bit less sometimes. It depends on what the readers really like in their submissions, but okay. something around there is our long list. And then we, myself and the editorial team get that down to the 10 finalists, um, which we then usually send to a judge. And oh. for the contest that's open right now, Frontier Open, I choose. So I would choose the winner out of those 10. Okay. Um, but that, that's pretty much the skeleton structure of the process. Okay. And how many submissions do you get per week, per month? Well, with our free category, we get I was just looking at the numbers yesterday for, we have a free fast response for BIPOC, okay. um, which gets around a hundred and that's two to four weeks response. And those go right oh, wow. to the editorial team. Um, and then we have our regular submissions. We get, it ranges between like 200 and 500. Mm -hmm. it'll, it'll move between there each month. Um, and then the contest, we, we try to keep that number a little bit proprietary. Um, but it's something similar. I just want to repeat that because it's so rare and wonderful. A two to four week response time to get back to submitters. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, we did that. That's we did that great. after last summer. That was something yeah. that we do with almost all the magazines, the editors, we all decided together that that was an important way of really making some practical change to mm -hmm. our publication calendars um, and thus to the industry at large. Um, it seemed like a really efficient way to, to do something um, to address the inequity of the publishing industry and who gets published and who the gatekeepers are, that sort of thing. Oh, that's great. Uh, so you mentioned earlier that like all your energy right now is all going toward the magazine. So can you tell us like what you're up to? Like what, uh, what is a day in the life <laughs> for an editor of this magazine? Yeah, so I mean, most of my time is I, I wear the editorial director hat. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm helping solve problems with the editors. I'm helping um, build our audience for different magazines. Uh, everything sort of needs a different hand, a different, it has a different path. And my job is to act as support essentially for the editors and to hold the vision of the collective as a whole together and push on that vision. Um, so, I mean, <laughs> what that comes down to is a lot of answering emails, a lot of meetings. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that, that, that's sort of most of my week. Um, meetings, emails, reading up on the industry, you know, planning for the future, 
um, addressing, putting out fires for all the different magazines. And then for the editor of Frontier, um, also emails, there's a never ending emails. Uh, <laughs> And then, yeah, managing our slush and managing mm -hmm. our um, readings that we have to do each and every week, uh, seeking out, you know, training and mentoring um, Saba and Jose, um, building out our calendars for the month because we have like three interview series going right now. Um, and so we're constantly scheduling those out. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I think that's yeah. kind of my week. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So I'm lucky that this is my full-time job. Okay. I, I just, I'm, I'm truly blessed that mm -hmm. this is it. This is what it's been um, for about a year, okay. a little over a year, I think, a full-time job for me. Okay. Because uh, the, the magazines were part-time. Um, right. Yeah. That's great. And so the magazine does... Um, you publish poetry on the site and you right. publish chapbooks as well. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, yes. And you and those don't, are... yet I didn't see, uh, you don't review poetry books yet. No, we did in the beginning. Or do you mean as uh, submissions? Like, or yeah, no, like other reviews? people. Yeah, yeah. Like um, po other poetry collections. Yeah, no, we, we used to. We, what okay. we found is a little bit more effective, attractive to an audience, as well as um, efficient time-wise for both the magazine and the author, mm -hmm. um, is to do run interviews in support of, and these are just sort of quick, bite size. It's something that I really sort of feel like Frontier needs to be. It, it, it's um, brief, but sort of powerful encounters. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's kind of frontier space a bit. So our interviews are usually just, you know, three to six questions. Okay. Um, and we'll, yeah, so we'll, we'll do those with the authors in lieu of actual reviews. We just didn't find that we were, our reviews were getting much traction. Yeah. And I, I love reviews, right? Mm -hmm. I, I got my MFA and that's what I wrote the whole time. My degree is in literature. I love the art of creating a good review, but mm -hmm. it just was, one of those things where it's like time versus end product um, yeah. and results. We had to make a change. Sure. I noticed that for the poems that you publish, you do write little introductions to the poems. Can you talk about that? Like the decision uh, to do that? Who writes them? Yeah, that was, that was pretty deliberate when we founded the magazine mm -hmm. that I wanted um, poetry sort of just thrust out in front of you so often and you're you're on your own and it being a space for new voices um we figure much of our readership is new voices new writers um so i i wanted to one give the contributor something they can like hold on to mm -hmm. it's, just, it's so nice to get something about your poems it's nice to be published but it's also nice to get a little blurb yeah um and so i wanted to give that to the contributors and i also wanted to give the audience just like a little bit of setup um, to help them get into the experience of the poem. Mm -hmm. And I wrote them for a very long time and now Jose writes them. Um, and he's been on the team, gosh, I think since January, okay. he's probably been writing them um, and he does a good job. Yeah, so I, that that's sort of the twofold aim is to mm -hmm. give something to our contributors and then to give the readers a little bit I don't know, a more comfortable experience, an easier experience into the poem, something mm -hmm. like that. That's really cool. It seems like you guys have the contributors very much in mind in terms of how you're structuring the magazine and running it, that you really want to create a space, a positive experience for them and help them in their careers and their work. Yeah, very much. And it's yeah. like, I used to be a middle school teacher mm -hmm. and it's, it's sort of the similar feeling where you never feel like you're doing enough, mm -hmm. you know, or like there's, it's not, you know, in our sort of industry, in our space, and I imagine this is true for other magazines and everything, because we're all creative, passionate people that good ideas, the, the lack of good ideas is not the problem. It's just the lack of energy and time. I mean, because burnout is so 
so very, very real. I, I imagine with editors, I mean, I know I experience it where if I, yeah, if you just follow every good idea that you have, mm -hmm. you're, you're going to wind up not really executing well on any of them. So I, that's just where my brain goes when, when I think about what I could be doing for contributors. Right. I want to do more. <laughs> I want to do more. Um, always nagging that I'm not doing enough for them. <laughs> so yeah, it's a big priority. It is. You guys pay contributors? Yes. Okay. Yeah. We pay we pay fifty dollars per poem. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Also kind of rare. Yeah. It's a rare thing. Yeah. 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 And the, you we pay that. That's from our always open, always free category. Mm -hmm. Um, and that that's we, we can do that because we run contests. Mm -hmm. Um, the whole thing works because we run contests. Right, right. And it, it's a big priority because contests are a tough part of our industry. I mean, they're, they're, they're complicated. They can mm -hmm. do so much good, but it's also like, it's hard to like, I'm paying in to participate. You know what I mean? Right. And that's a, that's something the editors and I, we really prioritize on is making our contests like the best sort of experience that could possibly be for mm -hmm. our submitters. I mean, a big goal is to make every contest submission worth a hundred dollars back in value um and right now that means like we're we're gathering we're reaching out to partners to get really great discounts like mm -hmm. the poetry school has been great they gave us i think it's a 20 percent discount to all their classes that we give to all of our contest submitters That's same great. with the writing salon um and there's another one i can't think of right now but we try to do that mm -hmm. for each and every contest on all the platforms mm -hmm. get that value back to be equitable to be anti-racist just the best mm -hmm. sort of experience you could have with a contest because we understand that it's like this thing is part of the industry it's not going anywhere it's how we survive it's how we exist without sort of chasing down grants and funding and we can make our own decisions um but it is it is complicated and mm -hmm. we have to approach it as ethically and positively as we possibly can and it's a right. big priority for us right. it's wonderful so you guys have a contest running now till july 18th so everybody who right. enters the contest and pays the contest fee um there will their work their work will be considered for publication automatically by entering Yes, absolutely. Um, so we do often select works from contest entries to mm -hmm. get on our regular publication calendar. Um, and then we just have with this frontier open. This one's different where we have one big winner who wins 5000. That's also something we're, wow. we're proud that our contests give significant prizes. Yeah. Um, so the one winner gets 5000. Then we'll also publish the nine other finalists who will yeah. get hundred dollars each um for that publication um uh, yeah usually it's top three get published um, okay. in our contests that's really cool so can you take us um behind the scenes like has there been a poem that you guys have published recently that was maybe controversial among, or there was some disagreement among the editors um and how did that get resolved or is that is that uncommon it's pretty uncommon. Yeah, it's pretty uncommon. Because um, we're all asynchronous and we're all okay. sort of across the across the states, across the world, um, the editorial team. We usually, you know, there's I have to make decisions um, sort of based on what I know the calendar is mm -hmm. based on you know, decisions around equity and inclusion and fairness. Um, and those things are sort of land on my shoulders. And so sometimes those decisions will have to be made and they perhaps, um, you know, as far as the editorial team, like really loving this poem or really loving this poem. And I have to decide that, you know, despite that, like it just doesn't work mm -hmm. to include that, in, you know, in the finalist list or on the publication calendar or whatever it may be. Um, those happen very, very rarely. And for the most part, um, though I've tried, you know, with Saba and Jose in particular to bring up voices that and perspectives a little bit different from mine, though I still trust that they know good poetry. Mm -hmm. 
we haven't had occasion to really disagree too much. Um, I can't think, I really can't think of anything where there was a sort of a naughty decision about publication. Yeah. <laughs> it's been, it's been pretty fluid. I mean, there are times where um, perhaps a poem that goes through our reading team and it gets, let's say it had eight readers on it in the second read um, and it got eight upvotes and everybody just loves it. And I get in there and I look at it to make my decision and I'm like, I'm not sure about it, but because I do trust my readers and I trust the fact that their perspectives are different from mine and that brings value, then that one I will add to the publication calendar. You know what I mean? I'll, I'll let myself be outvoted in that way. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that, I mean, that happens rarely too. It does happen, um, but I can't, yeah, I can't point to a particular one that was sort of cause any disagreement <laughs> no, we're, we're pretty happy family yeah. yeah take us through has there been um or is there a poem that stands out in your mind as like yes this is this is why i got into this business i'm so excited to publish this i'm sure you feel that way about many or most or all of what you publish um but can you can you tell us about like one that just really excited the staff and why you chose it yeah um yeah i mean my favorite the, the warm, my heart warms in this job, you know, when I get to talk to our contributors and say, here, you've won $5,000 for a <laughs> poem you wrote. Isn't this crazy? Yeah. Good job. Congratulations. <laughs> That's awesome. Also, just in the regular publication calendar too, it's, it's really great. It's very, it's, I, that's what I love about being a publisher is, you mm -hmm. know, talking to those contributors, making that human connection. Um, so saying that the one I, the poem that sort of, I don't know, I guess it, it felt like it solidified my experience as an editor. I don't know how to say that, it, that it, it felt like this, wow, this thing is really working. It's, this is amazing. It's um, Tiana Clark's poem, Tim. And I think it won, gosh, I had to look it up. It won award for new poets. Um, no, it won the Frontier Open in 2018. Okay. Um, so the same version of the contest we're running now. Uh, so she got $5,000 for this poem. And it's it's just a devastating poem. Um, just a, as a sort of content warning, there's sexual assault, assault involved and abuse there. But it just, I still think about that poem. This was yeah. three years ago. And that that's hmm. yeah, one of the very sort of, high marks for me and my feelings as an editor when I when I got to publish that I was like this this thing is working because yeah. it's an amazing poem and, it, and we all know Tiana Clark is just amazing um very lucky that she participated with us yeah mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's great is there is there a style that you prefer style of poetry that you prefer or um are you more interested in like displaying a wide variety Th that's such a tough tough yeah. question i mean because i don't i don't have a style for i prefer because i just love being surprised yeah i truly want to be surprised in, in something sort of unexpected and not like what we've been publishing to show up and just be good um but saying that i know that's not particularly helpful to to writers out there um and i don't i mean i had to balance this idea of i don't want to say something that will keep those surprises from entering our slush because I want them there. I want the strange, the different, the, mm -hmm. you know, I want the sort of, you see in slush a lot, like rhyming quatrains center aligned. Mm -hmm. And usually that's a signal that this poet um, doesn't have much experience reading contemporary poetry. And they're sort of at the beginning of their journey. You know what I mean? The center alignment just as a signal to an editor, like that's, usually that means that they are stuck on last century readings. Mm. Um, but I want that form to come in and be just to blow me away. Right. So I don't want to say like, if that's how you write, don't submit to Frontier because there's a chance that something amazing can happen in that form. Um, but I will say, I will say, because I've been writing a lot of feedback letters recently. Um, and one thing I find myself continually advising these poets on is that 
my publication calendar is pretty tight. So I like we accept like one percent, maybe less of. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think our duotrope numbers were at like 0.6, 0.7%. We is our acceptance rate, which is really tough. Um, because like I said, we're getting hundreds each month and we only publish four or five, maybe six each month, you know, depending on what we accept from each poet. But the big piece of advice is have real emotional stakes in the work. It really has to like feel desperately um, urgent. Mm -hmm. Like there's an urgent concern that's being expressed in the poem uh, because a lot of what I find coming through the slush are, you know, poems that sort of are practicing your voice, practicing your language, um, and they don't really connect to some vulnerable, desperate place inside, some obsession. Um, and that that's really when, it, when I have to make these choices on what do I publish each week that's going to stop our audience in its tracks and get them to pay attention for three or four minutes. Um, it has to be something that's like connecting to some deep vulnerable concern inside. The emotional stakes have to be there. Uh, so if there's one thing I would say that Frontier looks for, it's that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned feedback. Are you, do you give feedback to all submitters or is that rare? That I wish. I mean, I, we, we have, we, we just did a Frontier Poetry Lab for the first time this year, it was just like, let's try this out, let's do it, where we got great editors like Jenny Mulberg and Rob McDonald, that's uh, Six Finch, and um, gosh, I don't wanna get it wrong, is it Pleiades? Um, let me just make sure I work from where Jenny's from. But uh, we tried to get these really great editors. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Pleiades, there it is. I was right, okay, just make sure. Yeah, so Jenny Mulberg from Pleiades and mm -hmm. you know, Rob McDonald from Six Finch as well as Kathleen Volk Miller. Um, like, and myself, we, we gave feedback and we tried to, for this one, that one was like sort of trying to build a, MFA style experience where they, um, where I designed a bunch of learning materials as well mm -hmm. as the feedback. Um, but usually in all, in all of our categories, you can pay for two to three pages of oh, okay. um, feedback. And that, that's, mm -hmm. we sell those for $59 each. And that allows us, um, one of the other wonderful things, we take care of our contributors. We also take care of our editor partners. So we pay $50 an hour to all of our editor partners involved in these programs, at least $50 an hour um, to write this feedback. And so that's, enough of that comes in. There's really an appetite for it that, uh, yeah, that keeps me, keeps me pretty busy yeah. with um, feedback. Mm -hmm. That's great. So you're creating, sounds like you're creating uh, not just opportunities for people to publish, but jobs for editors and right. poets. Yeah. yeah, right. Like with by creating expanding horizontally, like I described, where we're opening new platforms instead of going vertical and just one or two platforms, we're able to yeah hire these editors mm -hmm. um, like the Tommy, who's the editor of Fractured Lit and who's he and I are founding this new one, Uncharted. He's going to be essentially full time as an editor now hmm. um, running both of those magazines. And he just he was he was also a middle school teacher um, and he he retired he quit his job just to because awesome. this opportunity came up and that's yeah it's really cool that we're able to put like just put so much money back into mm -hmm. our contributors pockets into our editors pockets into our partners pockets um, yeah it's, it's it's a really exciting project to be a part of how might somebody get more involved with the magazine if they wanted to? Um, are there opportunities to start out as readers? Do you guys have interns? Anything like that? Um, interns is something we want to do eventually when we have the sort of space to do it. Um, yeah, each magazine will have a call for readers maybe 
once a quarter or once every two quarters. Um, and I would say go through that process and just sort of try to stand out as a reader because that's really where our editorial staff usually comes from is lifting up our readers into these paid positions. Um, so if you do join the reading team of any one of these magazines, just try to make yourself visible and helpful mm -hmm. um, so that those opportunities sort of then may come later down the line. Uh, and it's, it doesn't really ever hurt to email the editor um, if you do want to sort of support or if you maybe they are looking for just like one or two spots and they can send you the reader test. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't hurt to send an email like you can send it to me. All our emails are on our websites. Um, you can just email the editor directly if you're interested in being involved. And maybe there's a spot open at that time. Okay, that's great to know. And if there is an open call for readers, would that be on Twitter? Is that a good place for people to find you? Usually, gosh, we've had to just open them and keep them on submittable uh, just to keep our numbers at a manageable, at a manageable <laughs> amount. Yeah. So like I would, um, Usually the, it depends on the editors and how many readers they need, and okay. how many applications they have the energy for. Um, because I think the master's view just did one earlier this year and it was something like 70 plus applications <laughs> to, for, you know, five to 10 spots maybe. Um, and we have a whole sort of readership test and onboarding process, uh, you know, anti-racism onboarding documents and okay. all this sort of stuff that they have to go through. So it's, yeah, it, I mean, it, it's not guaranteed that you'll get in if you participate, mm -hmm. um, but if you're a right fit. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Um, so what's coming up for you? It sounds like already there's a lot on your plate, <laughs> a lot going on, but um, anything new on the horizon or just uh, soldiering forward with what you're already doing? Yeah, one thing I'm excited about and I'm currently working on doing my research for is in July, we're going to be doing a prose poetry lab. Um, okay. So just to, we, we've partnered with some great prose poets. I, I mean, I'm not sure how many are going to participate. I'm always been curious about prose poetry, but in July, we'll be offering that. And this is a um, completely asynchronous, like convenience for the submitter, for the the customer is really like a top concern here. So it's completely asynchronous, it's self-guided, um, and it's gonna be all about prose poetry and getting okay. feedback on your prose poems. And that'll be in July. So I'm excited about that. That's sort of where my brain is. I'm also really excited about Uncharted Mag, um, Uncharted, which will launch August 2nd or so um, this year. Um, we've got some really great partner judges lined up. We've, mm -hmm. we've got, I mean, so many submissions in already when we don't even have the website up yet, um, <laughs> which is just, it blows my mind. We've got, you know, in just the past month, over a thousand short oh. stories have come in. Yeah. So we're, we're building out that calendar. It's really fun. It's really exciting. Um, and I've always loved, you know, genre fiction. That's always been my thing since I was a little kid. That's mm -hmm. where I sort of my safe place. So I'm excited for that too. <laughs> That's really cool. Is it all genre or is it a specific genre? It's it, we we've sort of have we're we're three sort of columns, right? There'll be sci-fi, fantasy, um, thriller and horror, and then uh, crime and mystery. Okay. So I, if you go to, you know, I think it's uncharted.submittable.com slash submit. Mm -hmm you'll you'll see those three options okay to submit that's your great. short stories that's really exciting there's a lot going on mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> and yeah. So the lab it's not a class or is, is it yeah. no no so it i mean it breaks down to i build this sort of packet of materials that is a designed sort of independently led coursework mm -hmm. um so it's going to be you know, places to send your work that are individualized to the submitter. There's going to be sort of uh, guiding, I, I don't know what to call it, but like guided annotations, uh, essentially, for mm -hmm. these particular books on the craft of prose poetry, mm -hmm. um, and as well as guided annotations for actual books of prose poetry. 
as well as we're trying to get in some more partners for some essays or some um, sort of lectures as well that can go along with it. Um, okay. It's all being built right now, but totally asynchronous. We, that's something that like we, we, there's lots of sort of educational opportunities out there. Mm -hmm. And we think, you know, one of the things that we can offer is just like, it, it, it's just, you don't have to show up, you know, four or six weeks and, right. and, and or have to take out time of your mm -hmm. life. It's totally your timing, how mm -hmm. you want to handle it. That's awesome. um, we just send you the feedback from really great authors mm -hmm. and then you do the rest mm -hmm. however you want. That's, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's great. Um, well, thank you, Josh. Thank you for taking the time today. Um, so where can people find you? Uh, it's frontierpoetry.com, right? And right. Uh, on Twitter at Frontier Poetry, is that right? Yeah. And you're yeah, Josh Rourke. That's right. Poet. And <laughs> yep, that's right. I think it's Joshua Rourke Poet Joshua, on okay. Twitter. <laughs> um, but yeah, Frontier, FrontierPoetry.com. And I would say we just published, I mean, we didn't get to talk about it too much, but it's one of my favorite things is our chapbook series. We okay. just published um, In the Year of Our Making and Unmaking by Frederick Spears, which is an amazing book. Carl okay. Phillips selected it last year. Um, it's free to download. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that we, yeah, that, that we try to do to get the book out there as many people as possible. Just go to the site, go to our poetry, you'll find it there and you can just read it right away. Awesome. Yeah. That's wonderful. So there's poetry on the site, there are interviews and there are chat books and there's a lot more coming labs a uh, whole yep. whole package of good stuff for poets and writers. Well, thank you so yeah, much. Right. I'm gonna yeah, thank you. Thank you for being